Hey, what's up guys? So I got a message today uh, from Jess who asks, uh, do you have any plans to do a video on data management for your imaging sessions? I find I have hundreds of folders with data for multiple nights, weeks, months, years, and would love to see you guys, how you guys organize it all. So I'm going to make a video very quickly about how we organize our data. Hopefully it's going to be helpful for you and um, it's going to be pretty quick, so let's go. First things first, how do we get our data from our computer or uh, SD card? So if we use the SI Air, we stick the USB card right into the computer and transfer our files into a folder, which I'm, which I'm going to show you in just a second. But if we use our imaging laptop with SGP, what we do is we set the save location to a OneDrive folder, so it's a cloud folder. So everything goes on this uh, OneDrive here and it goes inside this SGP folder. So this is on the cloud. So if we're imaging from the backyard, it will all go inside this light folder. And so all the, uh, the data will go here. So what we do if we image from the backyard is we can go uh, to our main computer and access this uh, OneDrive folder. And within about two minutes, our frames will start to appear here and uh, so we can easily check them out on the big screen. So either way, uh, once we do have that on the main computer, what we do with the files is we put them on uh, our desktop. So on, on our desktop, we have this file, this folder that's called still to process. So in this still to process folder, we put everything that's like, you know, on hold right now, that's um, and still to process. So for example, here we have M33, and in there we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven files that are just waiting to be processed. Uh, right now we don't have enough files on it, so that's why it's still there. Um, but for example, if we go to, um, let's say M20, we have M23 minutes with two different cameras here. And we have, we make sure we put the temperature and uh, the exposure time, and of course the camera and uh, have all the, uh, the data right there waiting to be processed. So if an object is still in this still to process folder, it means it's not processed yet. So we have to, uh, you know, if we one day we're bored and we want to process something, we can go in this folder and just pick one of these guys and just process them. And once that's done, we can just put them away. Once we process one of these objects, we don't trash it. We if we feel like the object is, is not good, if the data is not good, we trash it. But if we like the data and we think in the future we might want to add to it, we put it on our external hard drive. So we have one external hard drive here where we have a folder called Astrophotography Library. So in there we have um, well the DSO. So the DSO's folder here includes all the, all the DSO, so deep sky objects, data from the past. So for example, once we process um, the bubble nebula, we have a folder here that says bubble nebula minus 20 degrees, 139 gain. And if you go into it, you have all the data um, from the bubble nebula that we just live in there. So that way we can just add to it in the future and uh, easily you know, grab this data and add it to our current data. So. Um, all the, the targets you see here are ones that we like and we think are great data and we plan to add more to it in the future. So uh, we have so the DSO folder here. Um, what else do we have? We have the PixInsight masters. Those ones are just um, the files that are not processed but they're stacked. So if we want to, we can go back to let's say M74, open it and it's going to be the master file stacked. And if we want to reprocess it with more, you know, more skills, uh, we can easily do that without having to restack everything. So those are all the, the masters. And then we have the TIFFs. The TIFFs are the ones that are done processing. I mean, they're all processed. Um, but since we save the data as JPEG at the very end, you know, for Instagram and for our website, we still like to keep a TIFF. So with a TIFF, we can easily go back to Lightroom or Photoshop and uh, tweak the colors some more and tweak the you know, shadows and highlights some more. So that's why we have a TIFF folder here with all the TIFFs. So 
Uh, we have the DSOs here, so all the individual files. The masters here, so all the stacked but not processed uh, masters. And the TIFFs here, which are all, st which are all you know, processed and also um, uh, you know, ready, but you know, just in case we want to keep them, if we want to change some, you know, some uh, highlights and shadows and colors. Yeah, this one doesn't really matter. It's just a, a backup for our SI Air. Um, BIOS and DARKS. So this is where we have our BIOS library for our Canon cameras. So we have uh, you know, BIOS with different kinds of ISO and temperature. So since we don't really know the temperature you know, exactly, we just put like you know, hottest, like super hot, like, uh, like a July or August night. Um, slightly cold is probably you know, in, uh, in winter. And then we have, uh, so this is for DSLR cameras, and we also have a docs folder where our doc library is. And then we have, you know, in there we have our DSLR cameras. So the docs for 7D Mark II, once again with, you know, the ISO number and the temperature, you know, feel. And for our cooled camera, we have, for example, the ASI 1600 here with the exact temperature. So minus 20, for example, with the gain and the exposure time. So Let's pretend we want to grab dark um, files for a five minute minus 20 degrees, 139 gain. We just open this one and just grab it for fixed insight. So in this hard drive, in this external hard drive, we put our heavy files. So we don't you know, clutter our main computer hard drive. And then lastly, this one is in our uh, main hard drive and it is in our pictures folder so if we go to pictures here and then to astrophotography we have all the images we've taken uh, since the beginning so we like to have a few files so for example those ones are chronological so if we go to 2015 we can easily uh, go date by date so this one was our very first image of the stars and then you can see all every single time we went out to the desert to image so uh, date by date, our Milky Way. Uh, you know, it's, it's really nice to go through them. Uh, flame Nebula, our very first flame in Halstead Nebula. It's really nice. And then same for 2016. You know, all the dates. Uh, 2017. That was Tanapa. And you know, year by year. So this is really really nice to to go through. And then catalog here is the catalog of all the images we have so we have the messy catalog so this is so from m1 to m110 this is all the messy objects we currently have so we add them here you know, as we get them and then here is all the ic objects and then some with no names uh, planets are in there too see Saturn is right here and also ngc is over here this is all the NGC objects. The moon. So in this catalog folder is pretty much all the all the images by target name. Then here we have the comets. So we only have like two comets, but um, Catalina here and Comet Neowise. And what we have, we have constellations. So we like to do constellations images, but when we take new images of constellations, we will add them in this folder here. So we know where they are. Copyrighted are just the one that we have our logo in the bottom right. If you want to submit it to APOD or you know, some websites that require uh, copyrights. And Milky Way is just all our Milky Way shots over the time, like over the years, you know, with no particular uh, order. And we also have a Milky Way low size, so this is all the Milky Way shots, but uh, resized so they fit easily on Instagram or, or websites. And then what we have, the moon. So we have all the moon shots we took over the years, including some um, videos like the moon rise here. And we have our 2015 moon hunt with all the moon phases and that we took over a few months. Okay, and then I think we have two folders left. The others folder, which is um, what doesn't really fit anywhere. So we have um, this one, for example, is M33 that shows, let me show you. It shows uh, a nebula here, so it's kind of like you know montage or you know, pictures that are special that won't really fit anywhere. Uh, Star Trails plane, you know that one, 
and we have comparisons those uh, don't fit anywhere for example m42 versus m57 in terms of size um, the progress on m45 you know stuff that doesn't really fit anywhere um, you know, kind of like collage and some comparison shots uh, all are m42 and some other comparison shots. This is the Helix Nebula from uh, Bottle 3.5 versus Bottle 1. Pretty crazy. Anyway, and then we have, I think, one last one, which is uh, uh, time lapses. So this is our folders with all the time lapses we took over the time, over the years. So uh, I put them all in there so I know where they are. So those are all just time lapses over time. And that's pretty much it. This is our main, you know, our main folder for every image we took uh, so far, and they're all in this one folder, um, and they're divided by by date. So like that, we know exactly what date they were taken, and also we have a main catalog folder with all the full size images in there. And so that's pretty much it, guys. I think those are the, just the three main folders we have. So our astrophotography folder, our library folder, and our still to process folder. As you can see, it's pretty easy. It's just, uh, it's not cluttered or anything. So it's it's really, uh, we're used to, to doing this. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys if you uh, want to do the same for your computer. And um, yeah, so thank you for, um, thanks to Jess for letting us know about her concerns uh, in terms of data management and i hope this was uh, helpful to you and um yeah so we'll see you guys next time and kiss guys